Hello, this is Bern, and if you're a great catch and you know it, your friends know it, your family knows it, but for some mysterious reason, the type of man you want doesn't seem to know it, and you're not getting pursued the way you want to, on today's video, I'm going to show you why this happens so you can turn the tables around and attract the guy you want starting today. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com, a space where I share with ambitious, conscious, and heart-centered women how you can attract the money you want and enter the relationship you crave without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques. If this is your first time here and this type of topic is something that you're really interested in mastering, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Now, let's first define what being a great catch is all about, because there's multiple definitions. I wanna make sure we're starting from the same place. First part of being a great catch, from a man's perspective, is beauty. Why? Because guys are drawn to beauty. I'm not talking about beauty of the kind you find in a magazine, uh, where you find the thinnest model with the fairest skin, with zero wrinkles. That's not my definition of beauty, or most men's definitions of beauty. <laughs> definition of beauty is someone you feel viscerally connected to, attracted to, and that has to do not just with the DNA that you're born, but with what you bring to the table and how you feel yourself and express yourself in the world. Second part is intelligence. Why? Because a great catch is not someone who's just beautiful, but someone who's beautiful and intelligent, who has thoughts, who has beliefs that are her own, who is able to hold her own in a conversation, who has dreams and aspirations, who has ambitions. That's part of being a great catch. Next part of being a great catch is Radiance. Why? Because you can be beautiful and cold the size and no one would consider that a really great catch because it's not really fun connecting to someone who's beautiful and really cold or disconnected from herself or non-expressive. So radiance, your ability to shine the light that's intrinsic inside of you and infuse the world with it as one of the gifts that you bring into the world, then that's part of being a great catch. Next part is worth. Why? Because if you have worth, then you have standards, you understand what you're capable of, you're more confident. A woman who is confident raises herself in, in, in terms of being a great catch so long as that confidence doesn't translate into condescension or doesn't translate into thinking that she's better than other human beings. That's where you draw the line. You, you know it because you see in guys. If you find a confident guy who has heart, that's probably preferable to you unless your picker is maybe skewed the wrong way to a guy who is maybe a douchebag, who is so confident that he's putting other people down that he thinks he's the biggest price in this world. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for someone who is confident and heart open. Next one is balance. Balance is part of being a great catch because when you have the kind of life that you're seeking connection, your life is good and you want it to be better, that's balance. When your life sucks and you want a guy to fill the void, that's not balanced, where you feel like you need no one else in your life and you're as happy as you'll ever be uh, right now, single than with someone, that's not balanced either because you're not taking into connection the interdependence and the benefit of having a partner that far exceeds for some people, for many people, I'd say for most people, being alone. <laughs> so that's the first part of being a great catch, playing into this list of virtues. And I'm sure there's more, these are the beginning, that this is the basic part of being a great catch. Now, the second part of being a great catch is expressing yourself in such a way that you're a great catch versus a great secret. Many women who consider themselves great catches are really great secrets. You can't even say they're a great catch because you, you can't catch them. <laughs> you can't connect with them. You can't interact with them. You can't exchange your energy with them because they're hidden. Maybe they are attempting to connect but not in a way that allows them to create uh, strong attraction from somebody else because they're going about it in, in a way that's too shy. So. Second part of being a great catch is putting yourself out into the world in such a way that you, your greatness, your awesomeness can be discovered. There is no glory in being a radiant goddess hidden in the basement of your home watching Netflix. Now, before I share with you the seven specific points that might let you know why you are not creating the pursuit you want despite being a great catch, let me just share with you that if you're interested in taking this video further, that I can do in this short time period and you want to take my free training that I created that allows you to embody this information, not just have it in your head, but put it in your heart, put it to action, then the first link on the description of this video will allow you to watch my free training. You click on that link, you'll see a page that looks like this, enter your name and email, and you can start watching my free training right away. Now let's continue. The first reason why you are not being pursued by amazing, open-hearted, 
quality, as we want to call it, men who are seeking a lifelong relationship is because you might be letting your biggest area of opportunity run the show. Meaning, you may have all the skills in the world, and this, I've seen this happen more times than not. When push comes to shove and you connect with men, instead of focusing on the areas of your life where you feel confident, you focus on the one area of your life where you don't have mastery of, that you're really working hard to step into, and as you focus so strongly on that one area, you shine a big, bright reflector uh, into your insecurities. What does that mean? Let me go a little deeper. Well, let's say you're great at many different areas of life, but maybe you're not great at creating conversations with guys, or maybe you're too self-centered. Instead of focusing and relaxing and before the date, during the date, remembering, having in balance all the things that make you unique and great, you exclusively focus on, but I'm being too shy or I'm being too weird. What is he thinking of me? And you make that specific flaw big and bold and remove the confidence that you would have displayed had you relaxed, taken a deep breath, maybe exercised a little more, and then connected, remembering the greatness that makes up the totality of you versus the one thing that you feel ashamed of that might create a distraction in him. So that's the first reason why you might not be pursued. The second reason is because if you are living in a lack mentality, meaning you haven't gotten what you want again and again, so you've started to believe the idea that what you want is almost impossible to create, to attract, that the man that you want is one in a billion, and it's not true, but that's the way you start believing, then whenever you connect with someone that halfway meets the bill, you will stop yourself from sharing what you need to share. You'll stop yourself from being as hungry as you need to be, or as curious as you need to be, or as fun and flirty as you need to be, and your mentality will not allow you to set boundaries even. Why? Imagine this. Imagine that the guy you're connecting with in your mind is the maybe one in a billion kind. Well, if the guy is a bit of a pushy dude and you think that if you set a boundary, he's going to go away and then God knows when the next one will arrive, then you will not set a boundary, which means he's going to understand that you can be kind of messed with and then that's going to create the opposite of what you want. Third, reason why you may not be getting what you want, meaning being pursued by awesome men, even though you're a great catch, is maybe you've taken your independence too far. And here's what I mean by that. Maybe you feel like in order to protect yourself, in order to move forward in life, you have to be completely independent from other human beings to the point where when the guy connects with you, you give out the air and the attitude of, I don't need you, I don't need anyone, life is awesome, and if you join me, cool, if you don't join me, awesome as well. Here's where that mindset might be hurting you. We as human beings have survived through millennia, through being in community, through being in connection, through interdependence, healthy interdependence with one another. I am guessing that if you're seeking a life partner, you know in your heart of hearts that your life will absolutely be better with that human being in your life than with you alone. Which means, not any guy can fit the bill. You still have to do the things you need to do to have a great, fulfilling, and awesome life. But make no mistake, in relationships, if it's a healthy relationship, one plus one equals a hundred. Now, if in your way of connecting with men, you've convinced yourself you don't need men to be happy in your life, that this is, all, I mean, life is as awesome without men as with men, then he's probably feeling it. He's probably saying, you know what, I, I like that there's aspect of independence in your life, but I'm looking for someone who wants to co-create things with me, who I can bring value to, who needs me in a healthy way, right? So if that's not you, then he'll find somebody else. Next one, number four, which is the opposite of this one, but many of you may still be stepping into that, is extreme neediness, which means the opposite of extreme independence, meaning your life in your mind has been sucky for so long that when a guy arrives, you see him as a vehicle for solving the majority of your problems, your existential crisis, your fears, your insecurities, your mom telling you that you need to marry, you not have a family. It's like he becomes all of a sudden the solution to all your problems, which means you treat him that way. When he doesn't call you, you freak out because subconsciously, obviously, nobody's thinking consciously these things. He's the solution to your problems. When you, he says, can I see you tomorrow? And then you create, you open up your entire schedule for him. 
because nothing is more important to you than meeting him, because he's a solution to many of your problems, then he starts sensing that. And the biggest pain that a guy will feel when that's the case is he'll feel suffocated. Just like the other guy will feel like you don't care enough, this situation will create a feeling of suffocation, anxiety, and I want to run for the hills. So that's another reason why this may not be happening. Number five, you may be playing it too cool in your shyness, which means the guy is not getting a clear opening for, from you to connect. Maybe you're not flirting enough. Maybe you're not smiling. Maybe you're not asking any questions that make him know that you're interested in him when he's approaching you. So when you play too relaxed or too cool in the interaction with men, you might be a great catch, but it's one of those situations where you're a great secret versus a great catch because he's not feeling that you're open. He's not feeling that you're single. He's not feeling that you're interested. Now, many women feel like they can't be more open or more clear that they're interested because that would signal that they're desperate and that's nothing could be further from the truth. If you can be hungry without being desperate, you can be curious without being needy. You can say, hey, here I am. I'm interested if things go right, if you play your cards right, if you're intelligent, if you're courteous, if you're a gentleman. That's what you're saying, right? I may want to connect with you right now. I will not reject you if you connect with me. That's all the message you're saying when you're open and when you're creating a space for him to approach you by you putting effort by you making the first move, which might be smiling at him or connecting with him in some way that lets him know that it's safe to approach you. Remember, most guys who approach you with no signals are probably going to be the kind that push your boundaries too hard. Number six, you might be when you connect with men, you're playing it too vanilla. So too vanilla means that there's things that you love and hate that you're not expressing. There's parts of you that make you unique and different that some guys might love, some guys might hate, but the right guys will like that. And you're playing it so safe that neither types of guys are getting a clear sense that you're it. It's like you like maybe horror films. And when the guy asks you what kind of films you like, I say, you say all movies. And maybe you love salsa. Or maybe you love a specific form of folk <laughs> dancing. And when the guy asks you what do you want, what do you like for music, all music. So it's like when you're trying to play too politically correct in your own mind, uh, metaphorically, even when you're sharing generalities of you instead of specificities that allow the guy to get a better, clear, rocky road, pistachio of sense versus vanilla, then he doesn't get a chance to see who you are. So he's not reacting to you. He's reacting to his idea of you, which is plain vanilla and boring and moving away, moving along instead of connecting with you, asking you on a another date. Last one, you're wasting too much time with unavailable men. Maybe there's guys who are worthy, intelligent, hungry, they want to create connection with you, but in your mind and in your time and in your heart, there's this one dude who you really, really want for him to like you. You really want to make it happen, even though inside you know it's not the right fit for you, and you're wasting energetic and physical time with him in such a way that when you do go out, this is the guy you have in the back of your mind. When you don't get what you want, he's the guy you're texting and getting texts from. So maybe the connection you have right now with one dude who's not the right fit for you is creating a vacuum, sucking all the energy and air and time from you in such a way that even if you're engaging and connecting with other guys, they're not feeling it, they're not resonating, they feel like it's hit or miss, and hit or miss might not get you strong pursuit. And I'll share one more, that sometimes these things that I just shared with you are not the most predominant reason when you're not getting what you want, but maybe you're burnt out. Maybe you've gone on tons of bad dates. Maybe you have experienced months or maybe years of not getting what you want to the point where your attitude, your energy, your face, your questions, when you do it, you're doing the, you're doing the bit, but you're an automatic pilot and the energy and the passion and the excitement and the effervescence that's needed to create a spark, even though it's deep inside, is not coming across. I uh, hope this is helpful, useful to you and insightful. If it is, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. If you want to take this further and understand how you can attract the type of guy you want, not just intellectually, but in mind, body, and heart and actions, then first link in the description of this video will allow you to enroll in my free training where you can take it to the next level. If you like this video, please click like or thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking on the little bell. You'll be notified of new episodes as they come out. And last but not least, if you 
resonate with my message and you understand that the stuff that I'm sharing makes sense and it's true, but you need more than videos to make this work. You might benefit from working with me to help you get what you want in a fraction of the time. And if that's you, second link in the description of this video will allow you to apply to work with me. I'll read your application and if we're a great fit, we'll connect and then I can tell you what are the next steps from there. Thank you so much for allowing me into your home, phone, into your heart, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.